Good morning, Houston. Good morning, everybody. We are going to have a great program for you. Of course, this is Politics Done Right. And for you listening on uh, the interwebs, meaning either YouTube or Facebook Live, I started the feed about two minutes late. So uh, Jack Van Biver is in the studio all by uh, him. I mean, controlling doing all the controls all by his long time. Anyway, folks, we got a great program for you today. Title of the show is uh, Drug Treatment Fraud Exposed. All you need to know about the 2024, and I should also say 2023 elections. Uh, actually, I, I'd prefer it. I should have said the 2023 elections. And will Liz Cheney run? Uh, well, who knows if she will run or not. Anyway, folks, um, uh, we are, and I'm, we have these subjects to cover. And let me just tell you earlier on, most of the times, because you take priority, we don't get to all the subjects. You can always reach the subjects at, or read the entire subjects with videos, etc., at politicsunright.com slash newsletter, politicsunright.com slash newsletter. And again, at that sub stack, you have... Uh, the newsletter for every single day of the week, and they're all stacked up there. At the end, if you're uh, at the end of the uh, week, of course, you get a, a, a emailer with the entire week of uh, the topics that we intended to cover. So again, you can check it out at politicsandright.com slash newsletter, where you will be able to get whatever we don't cover here on the program. Anyway, folks. The number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Please give us a call early. You know, if you wait a while or wait too long, we kind of have to rush you off or rush to get to the other person. So I ask you ask you so kindly to call the show early. 713-526-5738. Most importantly, before I get to the program, we are in fun drive mode we remain in fun drive mode until we start getting more what we call sustaining memberships we will continue to have to break in every three months or so to have a fun drive and i know it takes away 10 15 percent of our time i try to do less than that if people start to uh, call in early and and contribute so i ask you so kindly to go ahead and call now 713 Five two six five seven three eight, and provide the support that you know is necessary to keep this station going. That is seven one three five two six five seven three eight. We simply cannot do this without you. Seven one three five two six five seven three eight. I'm 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 putting up my donation tracker on the screen right now so that I I can know who I need to thank for calling in and supporting the show. So please do so now, 713-526-5738. Alternatively, you can go to kpft.org, kpft.org, select the amount you want to contribute, select the program that you want to choose, which is Politics Done Right, and then, of course, go ahead and... uh, you know, uh, move on from there. We have several offers for you. You can uh, become a sustaining member for five bucks a month, ten dollars a month, fifteen dollars a month. That's like a coffee a month, two coffees a month, three coffees a month, that sort of thing. That really helps us out. You have the option to choose that. You can choose to get have a brick to lay that a brick that's going to be in front of our studios at twenty five bucks a month for an eight by four, or you can have an eight by eight brick with whatever you want to say on that brick to support the program for $50 a month. But again, we know everybody doesn't have that in your budget. We're sure you have a coffee that you can give a month, $5 a month, $10 a month, or $15 a month, $20 a month, whatever you can, 713-526-5738. Please be sure to tell them it's in the Hey, Berto. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, we're also, we're partnering with, uh, Houston Center for Independent Living, uh, and for every thousand dollars we raise, we uh, we donate a parka to uh, people that are disabled. And that, I think we've got about wonderful. fifty-six of them going now. So we're we're on we're on the roll. 
Hey, let's let's keep going, folks. This fund drive for uh, KP, it, you know, it takes fifty thousand dollars a month minimum to run our station, and uh, we are so this fund drive. We since we do it every quarter, we must raise one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of that. I at my program politics and right is responsible for five thousand dollars. So if we have an angel out there, somebody who has uh, money in the bank that says, you know what, I want to do something positive for our society to make sure they're informed. Hey, you can do a one time five thousand bucks for the politics and right show. I will give you a big thank you. Take you out to lunch, all that good stuff. Give you a T-shirt. Hell, I'll even throw in all of my books as well. So I mean, if, if we have somebody that does the whole Monty, I tell you what, this is not on the on on the on any of our things when you call in. But if somebody gives us a thousand dollars, I'll I'll throw the book at you. I mean, I'll I'll give you a copy of my five books. I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll I'll take you to get some coffee and uh, whatever else I'm able to do, I'll do just to make sure that we keep this station running. So. Do I have any takers that that's, you know, one of you rich folks, one of you guys would, well, not even rich that have some money that you say, you know what, I want to donate for a good cause. Let me get a thousand bucks or so to politics done right. It doesn't come to me at all. It all goes to keep the station running. So if anybody want to do that, call 713-526-5738, hit extension number one. And tell them that you want to give that and, and that uh, it is in the name of Politics Done Right. Or you can do it at kpft.org, kpft.org. Hit the donate button and go on from there. Folks, we got to get into the program. But before, it seems like we have a call. And since you always come first, let's go to Harry, a different Harry, a different Harry Medicare. Let's go, Harry. How are you doing this morning, sir? Doing well, Egberto. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. Talk to me, my brother. Okay. Um, I called in a little bit late yesterday, so I wasn't uh-huh. able to uh, complete, complete the conversation that I wanted okay. to have. Sure. Go ahead, it, sir. It, sir. It's concerning Medicare coverage, parts A and B. Yes. As well as as well as the twenty uh, percent of medical bills that. Medicare won't cover. Yes, sir. Okay. So A A and B, I know, are are covered by Medicare, but uh, I'm about to be going on to Medicare, Mm -hmm. and I'm a little bit concerned about the 20% medical costs that Medicare won't cover. Yes. So um, my question that I was posing to you yesterday is, there are some cover- there are coverages that will help eat away or chip away at that twenty percent yes and and I was just kind of wondering you know what what is that worth to you or to anybody else to be able to buy coverage that would chip away at that twenty percent uncovered cost let me ask you, because I don't understand the question when you say, what is it worth to you? Because uh, tell me what you mean by what it's worth to you so that I can explain it in that context. Okay. So if I was, is, is there coverage I can buy to eat, chip away at 20%? Okay, great. I'm glad that you asked it that way. Thank you, sir. That is important. Uh, there is a, a There is an insurance to cover the 20% portion of Medicare called Medigap, all right? And a lot of companies sell what's called Medigap. It, it falls under very strict guidelines. And one of the guidelines uh, is that if you get Medigap at the same time that you are getting Medicare or six months subsequent thereafter, you you don't have to be they don't have to pass you through tests for whether you're healthy or not etc you don't have to there's a you don't have to go through that testing you they have to accept you at the current price of whatever it is medigap cost which is a, a generally fairly inexpensive so medigap is there to cover the 20% that you that medicare doesn't cover 
And uh, that way, when you go into your uh, to, for healthcare, you are covered at one hundred percent. Now, if you decide to go to to Medicare Advantage, which is also called Medicare Part C, which is really not Medicare at all, it is just your basic old uh, 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 private insurance paid for by the government at a higher premium by the government, which means it drains the Medicare fund, but gives you much, uh, it, 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 it limits you to what doctor you can see, what medicines you can take, what hospitals you can go to, whether something is covered or not. Uh, it, when you leave the state or you leave the county or you leave the city, you're likely out of network, which costs you more. Uh, there are a lot of hidden charges. They don't, they don't charge you upfront, but generally speaking, you will have, have noticed that you have a whole lot of things out of pocket. Why is that the case? It's private. And when something is private, you don't matter. It's the shareholders and executives that matter. I hope I answered that, but tell me if I did or did not. Well, yeah, he, he did in a way. Being private, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Let me stop uh, for a minute, Derek. That's not what I. That's not what I mean. I. I really didn't mean. I. I love oh. having a pizza shop. I love having private uh, 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 grocery stores. Buy a car. Things where I. Where you have a choice. In other words, where you have a choice to get something or not. I think private companies are the best. I had a private software company. Boeing could decide to buy my software or not buy my software or go to somebody else. When you break a leg or when you have a cancer or something, you don't want a private company determining your cancer survival or your cancer treatment based on whether their shareholders and executives will make a profit. Wouldn't you agree with that? In a way. Okay, yeah, let's, yeah, I, I, I want to probe that. you then. I want to probe you because a lot of people, when they hear me speak, they want to call me a communist and they want to say all of this. I'm saying, no, I am just no, a humanist. Uh, I care uh, about human I'm, values. I'm, I'm not going to be ugly to you. I'm, you're, you're trying to help me out here. So I'm not going to call you dirty names. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, but I, I. But you know what? I don't mind when friends or foe call me dirty names as long as they are correct at the time. That if I need to change something, I will, brother. I promise you that. <laughs> anyway, anything else okay. I can help you with, or do I need to add anything to that, Harry? I want to make sure because oh. Medicare is a serious thing, and a lot of people that are listening they are confused because the people oh. who are selling it right now they lie to you or they misinform you. And what I want to do is come clean and let you know exactly what you're up to. And I want to make sure that you are the ones taken care of, sir. Anything else that I need to add to this, sir? Uh, no, no, that's that's pretty good, and uh, I'm going to do something that I promised. Myself, I would never do. I'm going to uh, contribute to your show. Wow! Well, thank you so kindly. I, I uh, remember wow. when you when you call the number, let them know it's for politics done right, and it's seven one three five two six five seven three eight extension one or kpft.org. I really appreciate that, sir. All right, I need to. Do I need to call back? Uh, yes, you need to call back 713-526-5738 and hit extension one this time and you'd immediately get to us. Right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Harry. All right. Let's go to Joe on Medicare. Come on in, Joe. Uh, you are, let's see, we're, you're going to be on in a minute, Joe. Uh, we're, we're about to hit the right button to get you on. So, well. Uh, you're on now, Joe. Come on in, Joe. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can. Okay, I I want to tell you about my experience. I was a teacher in HISD. Mm -hmm. When I retired, uh, I was offered uh, the continuation of my health care mm -hmm. called TRS Care. Yes, ma'am. Time. Uh, they were changing all retirees into a Medicare Advantage group. Right. When when I investigated it, I found 
Um, I had been seeing doctors at Baylor College of Medicine. And what I found out was that this Medicare Advantage group that they were putting me into, uh, I think it was, um, I think it was governed by Aetna, mm-hmm. um, would mean that I would not be able to see any of my doctors at Baylor. Mm-hmm. And I would not be able to go to St. Luke's Hospital or Methodist mm-hmm. Hospital. I was going, and I live in Westbury, Mm -hmm. so they were telling me that I was going to have to go to a hospital way out on the west side of town, and that um, my doctors at Baylor would not be able to see me, or they wouldn't cover my doctors at Baylor. Mm -hmm. So I said, "H, no, (laughs) I'm not Mm going to. That's stupid." So I took regular Medicare. And to cover what the gentleman before was talking about, the meta gap, the twenty percent, mm-hmm. I went to United Healthcare and I got coverage for the twenty percent. So I'm I'm doing just fine now. I see all my doctors at Baylor and unfortunately though, I'm paying a very high premium for that extra 20% coverage. Now, over the past 13 years Mm -hmm. (laughs) since I've been retired, I have found that I pay almost $350 a month for my Medigap, for my 20% coverage by United Healthcare. Mm -hmm. And on the average, my doctor bills uh, medical services, the amount that uh, I would have had to pay if I had been paying the 20% out of my own pocket would have been far less than what I am paying United Healthcare for that coverage. But I feel that it's a gamble. I may have some very serious illness. And that 20% might just skyrocket. And then I would be very happy for the coverage that I have. You, Thank I you. mean, That's wait, wait, let, 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 don't, don't leave yet, Joe, because you have given a clinic that is very important. And it's something I'd like to expand on what I said before. You are so correct. First of all, however, you can shop around for Medigap plans that are that that have some you know restrictions to make things better, sort of to make uh, to to only kick certain things in if that catastrophic thing occurs. However, uh, you did the right thing in saying you know it, it's you uh, in saying it is or you said the right thing by saying it is a gamble. Now let me also tell you that the way the si- doctors and many hospitals know the system, the bit the system is so corrupt. And that there are some people who simply cannot afford Medigap. Guess what? Many times they do. They forgive the 20%. I mean, their, their regular prices are so high anyway. And I'm not telling this to tell anybody not to get coverage. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying many doctors understand where we are in healthcare, that our healthcare system is horrendous. And many a times they forgive the 20%. How do I know that? Many uh, many folks have told me that themselves as far as what happened. OK, now that said, uh, this is why, Joe, the, 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 the activism that we do here, uh, not here, but that, that I do is about health care, a program called health care for all. I don't want that there need there doesn't need to be a Medigap at all. There should be 100% coverage with Medicare. We all pay 3% while we are working on our entire income into the Medicare fund. One of the reasons things cost so much is that there is so much profit for a few execs and shareholders in this entire medical system. If we got rid of all the inefficiencies, like having multiple insurance companies that a doctor has to hire secretaries and people to fund all of this, if we got rid of all that irresponsible, immoral overcharging, we could have 
healthcare for all, where a woman in your situation will never have to buy a Medigap plan. You have worked all your life and you deserve in a society. That's why we have something called society. You deserve to have your health care taken care of after you have retired and paid into these systems for decades. The money is there. The only reason we don't have it is because the, the, the plutocracy, those who control our system, have continuously fooled us, have continuously thrown ads at us to make us make the wrong choices, not only in plans we select, but in the votes that we make. So by you giving this info and coming on to our radio and letting folks know the reality of today, just we will change tomorrow to ensure that through your lifetime, we ensure that we get rid of having that 20 percent gap, 100 percent payment and the disabled and the dis and the, the ridden us of the evil that is Medicare Advantage in the aggregate. Thank you very much, Joe. Anything else you'd like to say before I go? Um, you know, uh, to, to give them their, their due, uh, I have heard from many friends of mine who opted into the Kelsey Siebold, uh, Kelsey mm-hmm. Advantage. Yes. And everyone, uh, that I know, uh, who did that, they have been very happy with the service that they get. Um, and let me tell so, you, yeah. uh, Go ahead. No, I'm just saying that, you know, perhaps I, I, they're not. I, I want to give kudos to Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey was the the first Texas company to have been a uh, group. I'm talking about the Texas medical group to be certified for Obamacare when it when it came out as and, and they, they learned how to use Obamacare to really good, give very, very good, comprehensive coverage to people. Kelsey is now a for-profit organization, as well as, again, exec gets pays based on how much comes in, etc. So let me say one thing. Because service today is great, and I have heard just what you've heard as well. The Kelsey plan is very good. I have a good friend of mine. She's, a, I think she's 80 years old. She sent me an email, said, like, Berta, she heard my show about Medicare Advantage and wanted to get rid of it. And she was happy with her plan, too. And my thing is, mm-hmm. the work that we do, the issue is not whether you're doing well today. The issue is whether the model, the way these systems are designed, will be good and sustained over time. And in a for-profit thing right. like Kelsey, as more people age, as more people get sicker, those ben- when it's time to ensure that the shareholders and the exec continue to make the monies that they make, the only people that will pay the price are the, are the patients and the providers. We have the, we have the advantage plan in the middle or the, the private uh, insurance payer in, in the middle that pays the the provider and also uh, tells the patient what they can what services they can provide. That is what ultimately suffers when they start to make less money, and that is what you know. I can't wait as an activist for you to feel pain before we try to solve it. If you start to feel pain from a system that is degrading, by then it is uh, much too late to solve the problem for you specifically. And that's, you know, we have to be forward looking. So I thank you very much for allowing me to say that as well, because for all those people that are under Medicare Advantage who says, but my, it works great for me. My thing is, oh, honey is always good. Uh, Lemon is always good before it turns bad. And that's, uh, that's what I'd like to say. Joe, is there anything else before we go to Gonzalo? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so kindly. You have a wonderful day, Joe. Come on in, Gonzalo. ¿Cómo estás, mi hermano favorito? Uh, muy bien. Buenos días, Egberto. Good morning to Houston. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, I was thinking uh, as this uh, retired uh, from HIV teacher uh, yes. was talking about the insurance after you get retirement. And, yeah, I, I felt uh, the way I feel. Uh, with my insurance, I was just making a uh, quick math and with my crappy insurance, 
if my family all together got sick uh, with my deductible, my monthly pay- payment, that will be one third of my salary. Right. So, uh, in Canada, where I live, and I have a public health care, which was not perfect, I don't think I pay that much. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, uh, in Canada, we pay taxes. But right. that's the price we need to pay to get all those services. Right. In Spain, for example, there is called something IVA. It's mm-hmm. 21% uh, income tax. Right. So we have uh, health care insurance. So uh, you, you talked about Obamacare, and I know we have a slight disagreement about the way it was implemented. I think it was a great effort. He had eight years to fight that uh, battle, and he picked that battle, and he won. Unfortunately, 45 made his best to dismantle it, but being a law, it was impossible for him. Uh, I'm sure if he comes back, that will be another battle he will take because people are so full that they think that not paying taxes will keep them in uh, a safe place. And I'm not judging everybody in the, uh, in the state of Texas, but I have talked to many people and people don't want to pay taxes. That's the reality in most no. of cases. So I don't mind paying taxes as much uh, as much as I get a service that is uh, really a uh, uh, service and not profit uh, and, and people trying to uh, make money and send you bills. Yeah, That's let me, That's let me tell you something. Uh, Gonzalo, I agree with you. And let me just say something about uh, health care for all. Um, what What drives me crazy is uh, for us to have private insurance to pay a bill, right? Look, uh, one of the reasons that we have an economy based on profit is that the theory is that profits create incentive. In other words, if if folks can make a profit for doing something, there'll be incentives to create a whole lot of things. Uh, the truth of the matter is not uh, is that true to some extent. We want to make I when I had my company, well, I still have, but when I had my software company, yes, I made a profit. I made lots of profits, and I wanted to make a profit to pay my bills, etc. I didn't have to become a billionaire. I wasn't working towards becoming a billionaire. I was working for a for what I like to do and working for what I like to do and making a profit to be able to live is what it's all about. And that's how it is with the 99% of everybody on this planet. They want to work and they want to make a living wage. They want to be able to survive. There are a few people who want to have uh, uh, just riches and servants and all of that. Hey, if you want to work for that, that's fine. Just don't do it on somebody else's back, which is what our economy is many times is based on. Those who many of those, not all, but many of most of those, not many, but most of those who get rich on things like stock options and all this, they're making money on other people's back. Now, I, I want to centralize that onto the healthcare issue. One of the reasons I believe in healthcare for all paid for publicly, not that doc- doctors are private, right? Uh, hospitals are pri- I want all those things to remain where we get choices, right? But when it comes to pay a bill, why should it cost us 30 to, to, well, now with Obamacare, they dropped it to, I think, as high as 18%. But why is it that we must pay that much to a third party simply to pay a bill? Whenever you pay your insurance, uh, anywhere between 18 and 30%, and there are magical ways to even get more, goes to pay execs shareholders and salespeople of that insurance policy. Did you know that when they're selling you Medicare Advantage, that salesperson, many times, they make the the face value of the first year of your premium. In other words, that's not going to healthcare. That is going to uh, to uh, to some in somebody's pocket. They don't tell you all these things about how the system works. And because many times we are so ignorant to how the systems work, we are, we allow them to have us make the wrong choice. You watch TV today, all you hear is Medicare Advantage advertising. Who do you think is paying for that? Where do you think that money is coming from? That money is coming out of that healthcare bill, I mean, that healthcare premium. And at the same time, it's the reduction. You're, 
last week you heard w- one of the ladies who provide care say Medicare Advantage owes her on 700 different bills. They haven't paid her. That's what we're talking about. Anyway, Gonzalo, Canada, every Canadian that I know would never change their system to be like ours. They would never do it. It needs improvement as well, but nowhere close to what we need. Go ahead, Gonzalo. Yeah, of course not. That's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there is a clear distinction between uh, profit and repop. You know, if you see a bill with uh, an aspirin costing uh, $200, that's not profit. That's something else, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, ridiculously uh, insane that you pay for insurance. You go to a children's hospital, let's say at uh, uh, 1 a.m., and four hours, five hours afterwards, after being in a waiting list and paying more than uh, $600, right. uh, you see a doctor being wandering around because that's the only doctor in, uh, in that huge hospital. That's insane. Yeah. You know, it's they not about that money, they honor it by giving good services. It's not Look, a, oh no, Gonzalo, I got to go pitch a little bit, but a few minutes of pitch. But here's the thing, Gonzalo, and this is important. The doctors, most of them, most of them, not the ones that are just in it to make money, but most of these doctors, they work very hard and they want to give services. Don't talk about the nurses. These are the workhorses of our, uh, in every level, registered nurse, every form of nurse. These are the workhorses in our Medicare, medical system. They work so hard to get things right. The office workers that are in there trying to control all of this, all being puppeteered by a few people on the top who gets all the winnings. Every time you go into an office, a, a, a doctor's office that is limited in the amount of people they have, or you go into a hospital and, and watch how they cost cut and they put the burden on the patient uh, continuously, it is always so that the shareholders and the exec can make a hell of a lot more money. It's always about how much, how can we improve making a little bit more, making a little bit more, and you never come into the equation. That is what I want to solve. Anyway, Gonzalo, I got to go do a quick pitch, okay? Thank you. Muchas gracias, hermano. Tenga buen día. Anyway, folks, look, folks, please give us a call. Hey, Harry, I haven't heard from you yet. Uh, if you if you made something or if you did something yet, give me a call. 713-526-5738, extension number one to contribute. Anyway, folks, we are in Fun Drive. And as I told you, whenever you guys call in, you have you have you come first before what I wrote the night before for the program. But if you want to uh, listen to the watch the videos that I did for the program. If you want to uh, go to the articles that I cover in for the program, you can always go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, and that will give you what we're supposed to cover. But you come first. If you call in and you come on air, I take care of you before I take care of whatever the hell I was going to talk about. Anyway, folks, give us a call at 713-526-5738. Please hit extension one to donate. I'm at a big donut so far. Uh, we have one one uh, listener that said they are going to uh, uh, go ahead and contribute right now. As soon as I see that, I'll thank you on air, my dear brother. And uh, folks, but we need calls right now. We are at a zero. Estamos en un cero y necesitamos llamadas. Así que, por favor, llame al 713-526-5738. De nuevo, te voy, lo voy a repetir. 713-526-5738. Please give us a call at 713-526-5738. Hit extension number one to contribute. Hit extension number one to continue uh anyway folks uh uh we have a lot of gifts that we have for you if you go ahead and give us a call right now or rather if you if you decide to call and hit extension one you can get the politics done right t-shirt with a hundred dollar contribution you don't have to give that hundred bucks all at once you can do it over time if you'd so like to do you can also get uh, become a, a sustaining member. What does that mean? You can vote. You can do all these things as a member of Pacifica Network. Anybody who gives five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month, you're automatically a sustaining member. Uh, again, call 713-526-5738, extension number one to donate. Uh, $5 a month, $6, $10 a month. 
$15 a month, whatever you can to keep us on air, to make sure we can continue to bring all this information. You hear us talk about Medicare. You hear us talk about Social Security. You hear us to talk about taxes. You hear us talk about war and many, many other issues to make sure that we are informing you, not with what you hear on TV, with people, people who have ulterior motives, but to give you nothing but the unadulterated truth. 713-526-5738. Please remember to hit number one to donate and to specify that it's in the name of politics than right. You can also get, uh, uh, you can, if you decide to be a sustainer and want a brick with your name on it and a message or whatever, uh, for 25 bucks a month, you get a four by eight brick that makes up our walkway. You can also get a eight by an eight by eight brick for $50 a month. But look, any contribution that you can give to this station is a contribution and money we didn't have before. And it helps us defray the bills. We have a 100,000 watt transmitter that transmit throughout Southeast Texas, not just the Houston metropolitan area, but way and beyond. So our reach is large. Whenever you call here and you are on air, you have a very large reach right here in Houston. And sometimes it extends all the way into Louisiana. So again, you have a reach when you speak on this station. You have opinions. We allow you to come on here because we know we know the airwaves belong to all of us. And I, you know, the, the position, I, I am honored to be on the air and I'm honored to have you on the air with me. 713 526 5738, extension number one to contribute, extension number two to be on air. All right, uh, folks, I'm still at zero. I would love for you to give us a call now. And look, I've been asking for angels. What are angels? Angels are folks that are sitting down on a lot of money. And they have to decide, do I really want to give to a KPFT? Do I really want to give to a KPFT in the name of politics and right? Eh, I don't feel like it. What I'm saying, it's, a, it's worth it. And believe me, for the things that we believe, this show believes in right now, it'll help you hold on to what you got and make sure that we have a community that's there to you know, keep us all happy. 713-526-573 extension one. So if you're an angel, you know, I have to raise $5,000 for my show. Consider giving the entire five thousand dollars, and I don't have to pitch for the rest of the for the rest of the campaign. Or if you want to give a thousand dollars, and like I told you, anybody who gives that kind of stuff, I'll give them the full Monty. You know, a copy of all of my books. I've written five books. I'll give you a copy of. Uh, 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 I'll go to have coffee. All that good stuff. Because again, folks, this is all for KPFT. This is all to make sure that we can stay on air. The bills are fifty thousand dollars a month. I have to raise 5000 Angels, where are you? Can somebody call and give whatever they can? Anyhow, uh, I want to continue with the election. Folks, the election started. Hey, in, in, yes, sir. Hey, uh, Harry, the other Harry called back and said he donated, so his his pledge should be coming in sometime okay, soon. Okay, great. Great. I said, well, thank you so kindly, Harry, for your pledge as soon as I see it popped up. Uh, but actually, I can credit you right now. Harry, I believe you. Thank you so kindly for supporting Politics Done Right. We simply cannot do it without you. Sometimes the screener gets behind and put in the things on the screen. So thank you so kindly. So if you want to show up now, folks, why don't you call now? 713-526-5738. Hit extension number one. Hit extension number one, and we'll be here with you. Okay, let's go ahead and start talking about the voting thing here. And let me tell you why I want to do that. Because we're in, and, and I, I won't only be doing this today. I'm going to be doing this throughout the week. And, and I want to thank Bruce Pollard for, you know, I, I, I have pet projects, if you will. I'm very, I always want to talk about healthcare, Medicare, healthcare for all. I always want to talk about Social Security. I always want to talk about these issues that specifically affect us, right? And sometimes you don't see the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest. I don't remember what it goes. We have an immediate election here in Houston right now that needs to be covered. And I want to send you guys to, and I'm going to put it in the chat right now, a particular link from the uh, Texas Tribune. Uh, Bruce passed it on to me uh, last night, I think it was. I hadn't, you know, I read the Texas Tribune, but sometimes I forget to, uh, I don't see all the, the items that are out there. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the link inside of the um inside of the chat right now 
but it is uh, it is sort of like a cheat sheet of the constitutional amendments that you're going to be voting for here in Texas. And remember, constitutional uh, 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 amendments are not voted on just by select people. It's since it's a constitutional amendment, it's voted for by all Texans. There are, I think, how many of them this year? Uh, there are 14 constitutional amendments this year in this election cycle that that we ought to know about. And there are some specifically that got to me. And I, I want to tell you one specifically Proposition 1, first of all. Let me get, I'm scrolling down to it right now. Uh, Proposition 1 says a constitutional amendment protecting the right to engage in farming, ranching, timber production, horticulture, and wildlife management. What it does is it prevents the uh, the government from uh, really telling you what you can do with your land, except if it's for safety reasons and other things. And I heard a couple of critiques from people who are voting for it and people who are voting against it. The truth of the matter is I don't really have a, a suggestion on that one per se. I am voting no on that one because I don't want somebody to, uh, let's say, have cows in the middle of uh, <laughs> in the middle of the neighborhood or something like that if they own the land in the middle of the neighborhood. But again, I can understand that that isn't a reality that is likely to occur in in, in most neighborhoods. But, you know, if somebody decides to do something non-standard of that sort, hey, that could happen. But uh, you know, I can live with it either way. Uh, but there's an amendment uh, I, um, that that dealt with wealth, uh, and I'm I'm trying to find it right now. If uh, and and I'm going to touch on the others, but before I touch on the others, I really, I really want to come on screen. I really want to talk a little bit about this one here because it's it's what I called a gimmick. It's Proposition 5. It says, The constitutional amendment prohibiting the imposition of an individual wealth or, wealth or net worth tax, including a tax on the difference between the assets and liabilities of an individual or family. That is a dangerous thing to put in a constitutional amendment because of the following. We have all heard that the wealth disparity is getting huge in this country. And it's not getting huge because the American people are working less. Because if you ask anybody that I know, if I go into any part of this, this state, I will see bus stops are filled with people trying to get to work however they can. I would go into offices and I see people working, but at the same time, they're not making the monies that they should. They're not making the monies that they should. I want to make sure that those who are profiting on all those people's backs uh, will pay their fair share to make sure that society continues. And not only that, to ensure that uh, uh, to ensure that more than not. Uh, I, let me see. I, I, I see a, a, a new contribution from Foster Rincon. I think you uh, you put letters in politics. I think you bet politics done right, but that's OK. Uh, uh, it still goes into the, the same pot. But thank you so kindly, Foster. Uh, thank you so kindly for your contribution to politics done right. But uh, the, the, the name of the thing is politics done right, not letters in politics. So please remember, politics done right is what you select to uh, so that it's credited to me. The letter in politics may get credited to somewhere else if we don't, um, don't kind of fix it up. Anyhow, uh, thank you so kindly. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. The constitutional amendment for wealth tax, I think we should vote, in my opinion. I am voting no for that. And let me tell you why. Uh, let's say you are working at a McDonald's at uh, minimum wage, a little bit more than minimum wage. The owner of that McDonald's or the owner of these businesses, they make a, a killing on that money and they turn that money eventually into their wealth. If we say later on that we cannot capture that again, thank you so kindly, Daniel. Thank you so kindly, Daniel, for becoming a new sustainer. We cannot do this without you. 
we cannot do this without you. I thank you so kindly for becoming a new sustainer. Anyway, folks, uh, going back to the wealth tax. So that McDonald's owner, I have nothing against the McDonald's owners. I would love to own a McDonald's. My, my employees will make more than minimum wage for sure. They'll make a living wage if I owned a McDonald's. I would make sure of it. Now, that said, um, that money goes into storage, becoming wealth. And if I can't recapture some of that wealth that was made on somebody who made minimum wage and somebody who likely also had to take uh, welfare or had to take some sort of other public service because McDonald's only paid a minimum wage. I'm not saying that they did. I'm saying if they did. Then my question is, why shouldn't I be able to tax that the wealth of that person who got it on somebody's back in and in, in, in getting it on somebody's back? We also had to support that underpaid worker. It's not fair. I'm just using that as one tiny, tiny examples. I could give example after example after example. We should not say we won't uh we won't have a wealth tax in fact i think a wealth tax which we don't have right now is imperative let me get it one step further the average american citizen is already paying a wealth tax most of your wealth is tied up in your home don't you pay a wealth tax on your home every day in the form of property taxes see they call these things by different names so that they can hoodwink you they don't. They call your property. Uh, they they call. They make you pay property taxes. They don't call it a wealth tax, which it is. But the person who has a billion dollars in stocks, they don't have to pay taxes on that. And they they they, they will say, well, a stock isn't realized, so that's why we don't pay the property tax because a stock isn't realized. Well, a home price isn't realized either. A home price is nothing different than a stock. It's something that's held in an, as an asset, and it only has that value when it is sold. But we are still paying a property tax on it based on how much it says it's appraised at. So why not pay a property tax on what stocks are appraised at? Folks, understand the hoodwink. It's so very important. Come on in, Art. Let's bring Art into the fold. Art, how you doing, my brother? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Uh... Question. I just want to hear your thoughts. What do you think about <clears throat> the flat tax? You know, Steve Forbes, I think, started it. Uh, right. I remember. I don't know if it was his idea, but yeah, he, he tried to pass it. And um, at that time, you know, there was less information. So it was right. all pretty much. Fun. But Can now, I give you know, a, let me answer you. We're running close and, on time. So let me answer you on the flat tax, sir. Let me answer you. I am completely against the flat tax. And let me tell you why. Uh, even if there is an exemption, let's say a $50,000 exemption, meaning your first $50,000 is tax-free, everything else is a flat tax. A flat tax of a little bit is a little bit. A flat tax of a huge amount is a little bit. This is what I mean. Uh, the flat tax they were talking about, I don't remember if it was 10%, 20%, whatever it is. But if you have a, a billion dollars uh, in income, just as an example, a billion dollars in income, a flat tax for you is a hundred million dollars, right? Uh, but yeah. that leaves a nine hundred million billion nine hundred million dollars untaxed. When you have a uh, hundred thousand dollars, a flat tax of ten percent means okay, you pay ten thousand dollars, but it leaves another ninety thousand dollars that really goes without you know that is just yours. I mean, it is it is inherently unfair based on how wealth is raised in my opinion actually i shouldn't say in my opinion it's it's a mathematical statement right that what i just said was a mathematical statement so i don't believe i believe the reason i believe in progressive taxes is the following as you make more money you are believe it or not using more resources and it also you're actually working less for that incremental amount of money as an example the person who makes money off of stocks right? They are sitting back because they have the wherewithal to have stocks. As you, whatever work you do, Art, you are funding them. You are funding 
their the, the the capital gains that they have you are funding and and yeah people say well they have losses yeah but they can write off their losses off the capital gains of whatever else they have anyway all right uh, i need to go to melissa but you tell me real quick if if there's if i answered that uh yeah you answered it i think it's um i've always felt it was seems more fair and i think it would just do away with the whole irs all right. those volumes of books and everybody pay no more, no loopholes. Cause I would get rid well, of loopholes. I got you. All right. But I uh, think about what I said I about how much that. money it is left back. Art, I ask you so kindly to do that. Don't answer now, but I want you to think about what I just said about the person who has a hundred billion dollars or a billion dollars versus a person who. I makes, see that, but I'm, I'm talking in the tax itself. I mean, right. In, in I got you. I really got you. There. But, uh, but yeah, I'll look at that. And, you Thank know, you, Art. You have a great day, sir. Melissa, come on in. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Alberto. Um, I just wanted to qu um, quickly chime in on your um, no vote to the whole farming situation. I just yes. don't want it to backfire. No one is going to have no cows in the street. I don't want them to. I want to vote yes because I want to grow my vegetables in my backyard. And yes, I might want a chicken to lay eggs because eggs is expensive. But as far as the cow, no, I don't think cow. I, I, oh, guess what? Guess what? Guess what, Melissa? That's why I'm taking no position, right? I said I was voting no, but guess what? As soon as you said vegetables and chickens, I said, yeah, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, like, grow, grow I, vegetables Melissa, in my backyard. You don't need a farmer for that. Yeah. Melissa, no, I'm serious as a heart attack. Last night when I was making my, I was looking down and I said, this is what I'm going to do. I, that, I just said I didn't want cows, but I didn't care how people vote. But you just turned me into a yes, just because you said vegetables and chickens. So and one chicken, that's all you see. They lay eggs every day. Every day they lay eggs. Soon you know, you got 12, you got a dozen eggs. For real, all right. For real. Hey, and Melissa, I got to go okay, to Johnny real quick. Thank you, my friend. Johnny, come on in. Okay. <laughs> all right, Melissa. Johnny, come on in. A copy of the County of Galveston newsletter, Proposition 1 says... Get rid of the treasurer. Yeah, go ahead. No, it says the constitutional amendment protecting the right to engage in farming, ranching, timber production, horticulture, and wildlife management. My question is, protect them from what? When these Republicans write these amendments, these propositions, they always leave out information, which is suspect, which until I hear otherwise, I'm going to vote against it. Because when you look it up, the details, that's when you get the true picture of what's going on. What are they protect, being protected from? Are they I, saying they're protecting uh, animal raisers from liberals with cameras who are trying to document the animal abuse? Is that what they're trying to protect from? No, For they're not. But, but uh, uh, again, I, I was listening to a friend of mine who is a, a, a political science guy, and he's, he said he was voting yes. I said I was voting no. And um, the reason I was voting no was sort of taking some of the stance that you just, that you just took. Uh, now, um, you know, but I was a very soft no. Okay. I was a very soft no. Uh, he didn't find anything in the bill per se that seemed to be, um, onious, if you will. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, and like I said, I was just a soft no. And when Melissa said, oh, I can grow plants and have a chicken. I started to think, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just being a tight wad here. I think yes is probably the answer for that one. That's just for me. Like I said, this isn't one that I hold a big a big, you know what, too. The others I do. Well, then, if that was the case, then why did they mention zoning? You see, no, that's, that's why. An, I have that's another subject. That's another subject, Johnny. Hey, but Johnny, Johnny, call me back tomorrow because I'm at 56 and I got to go to this uh, control room before we end this, baby. Thank you, my brother. All right, let me run to the control room real quick. Come on in, uh, Jack. Ah. <sighs> Well, I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, let me, whatever the case is, I'll close out then, uh, brother. Look, folks, as Jack was in that studio, all doing all the magic, all by him, lonesome for the account uh, for the donors of KPFT. I want to thank you guys so kindly for supporting the program. We cannot 
cannot do it without you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Foster. We cannot do this without you. Look, folks, um, uh, go out there and vote. I didn't speak as extensively as I wanted to on these amendments. I will keep this going tomorrow and the day after and the day after. This is your program. Call in. Talk to me. Call in. Donate. Do all that we need to do. Uh, my name is – well, first of all, I want to thank uh, I, I thank Jack for – taking over that that control room and getting us on air, making sure we get everything done. I want to thank Howard Reynolds, who is taking some deserved time off. And I want to thank you, the audience, for listening. I want to thank all of us for getting the job done. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.